Hope you're all well and happily embracing and adapting to our new world. Uh, well, it seems like each time we take a step forward, we do two steps backward. Europe is at the epicenter of this pandemic once again. Right now, UK will be shutting down and be going on a second lockdown as the second wave of COVID-19 spreads uh, across Europe. This is very frightening and disheartening, which means that travel to the part of the world will be heavily restricted once again. British nationals currently abroad are advised that they do not need to return home immediately. However, they should check with airlines or travel operators on arrangement for returning. Some of the largest holiday companies and airlines have now updated their travel advice and set out how bookings can be changed or cancelled. What a huge blow to aviation and travel in general. It's going to be a long road to recovery. Yes, trust me, it's really going to be a long road to recovery. Now, let's come back to Nigeria. If you're planning a trip uh, to or from outside Nigeria, we'll look at who is eligible. First of all, we're going to look at the requirements for people traveling outside of Nigeria, as well as looking at the requirement for people coming into Nigeria. So now, for people coming into Nigeria, who is eligible and what requirements you need to get in. Now, there's a webinar uh, organized by uh, NADCOM, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. Uh, uh, my chairman of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiri, and then the coordinator of Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, Dr. Ali, uh, Sani Ali. It is a very comprehensive webinar. It is uh, very insightful and very. it's going to be very helpful. Okay, so I do not really want to talk much on this this webinar practically answers almost all the questions you know all the confusion you have okay so i'm just going to upload this webinar is a uh, over an hour long video and i decided to divide it into two the first one is where he takes on frequently asked questions questions that you might actually want to ask him or you feel that you needed answers to okay the second part is an interactive section with nigerians living abroad the people that organized it in conjunction with uh uh NADCOM. so i'm not going to take much of your time all i'm going to do now is that i'm just going to quickly look at some of the questions that ali you answered uh you have when should covid tests be done where should i register on travel portals if your departure airport is not captured on the data or on their website so what should you do if you're a diplomat Will you take a COVID test? Is a PCR negative test required for you to travel? Yes. From the country that you're coming from, the only time that you are exempted is when you arrived in Nigeria. The seven days mandatory COVID test is not required for, uh, for diplomats, okay? And again, for children age 10 and below, they are not required to undertake uh, a COVID test, okay? What to do if your test or if my test results takes up to seven days? That's another question that Dr. Ali answered. Why should I take a PCR test? Uh, how much does it cost? Can I pay with a Naira credit card? Reason for a QR code. Uh, another one is a procedure for a short trip. Will I be penalized if I don't pay before boarding? When should a long layover passenger carry out their pre-boarding test? Why are we not having testing done at the airport? And many, many more questions. I just took very few of the questions that Dr. Ali answered. This is still very updated. It's still, I mean, very applicable. So please go through the webinar very well. Listen to it very well. If possible, you can take down notes and then see where it concerns you, okay? And if there's any other question, like I say, please uh, do ask me and then I will do my best to get back to you okay i know so there's some of you that want to know uh that of ghana that of uh, flying from nigeria to america what is required so i will try as much as possible to see if i can leave a link that can really help you to plan smart and make sure that you get back home safely now as you make preparation to return home i urge you to stay safe 
please adhere to every rules and regulations laid on by the country that you are staying in so that you can keep yourself and your loved ones safe okay because i want to see you all safe so i'm going to leave you right now to finish watching this webinar and then we'll go over to the second part yeah good day, everyone good day dr sunny uh, dr Liu. can you hear me yes i can hear you okay, okay. Uh, good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for um, this, this session with Dr. Um, Aliyu and um, Honorable Abike Dabri Erawa. Uh, we're going to just get started, and I'm just going to go ahead and um, introduce Honorable Abike Dabri Erawa, the Chairman and CEO of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. Welcome, Ma. Thank you very much. And Dr. Aliyu, thank you for... Um, agreeing to do this, and I welcome all participants to this forum. And the aim is basically to answer all your questions as it relates to the issue of particular Nigerians and diaspora traveling home. You recall that we've seen a few videos. There was a guy who was on Berekete Human Rights Radio crying <laughs> that he was treated some way or the other, had to pay twice and all that. So there's been a few complaints, and NITCOM believes that it's all more about communication. And that's why today we decided to have a conversation with Dr. Aliu, National Coordinator of the uh, PTF on COVID-19. Um, prior to now, we've received too many questions that we've been able to compile into frequently asked questions and answers, which Dr. Aliu will now take us through. Now, here's what will happen. When Dr. Aliu is through with those questions that you have sent him, he already has them. Honorable Tara, our head of IT department in Midcom, also has some questions that you have uh, put in. Then we'll have some comments from some community leaders. Then we'll also take your questions through the chat as, we co as we're coming. So welcome to this session. I, I know that it will be very informative. And hopefully at the end of this, all your concerns would have been addressed by the National Coordinator. Over to you, Dr. Aliu. And thank you very much for agreeing to this. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, uh, good afternoon, everybody. It might be morning to some of you, so uh, good morning. Um, uh, thank you, Honorable Abike Dabri, for inviting me, and uh, thank you, Obina, for arranging this. Um, I think this is an opportunity for us to um, uh, really um, converse, have a decent conversation, and explain some of the things we've been doing in Nigeria. Uh, first of all, if I may introduce myself, um, so my name is Sani Aliu. I'm currently the national coordinator for the presidential task force. I'm a diasporan myself, and I very much appreciate some of the challenges um, you, you, you faced um, in the process of coming into Nigeria. In terms of the, in the travel arrangements, there are three reasons why we took some of the decisions we did. Uh, there, there were three things that we wanted to do. One was to limit the importation of COVID-19 into Nigeria. And that's the primary responsibility we have at the PTM, to reduce the number of uh, cases that are coming in and also the number of transmissions that are going on. The second is to prevent transmission during flight. This is less of an issue for us. It's more of an issue for the airline, uh, particularly ICAO. The third is to limit or reduce the quarantine period that's necessary for people that come into the country. Because um, as, as all of us know, um, we visit families, etc. The last thing you want is to spend weeks upon weeks in Nigeria quarantine before, before you're able to do whatever brought you in. So those are the three reasons why we took some of the decisions we had to take. The travel portal itself uh, has been running now for a, approximately four weeks. And during this period, during this period, we have brought in about um, 27,000 passengers. Um, 18,000 through uh, Lagos, 9,000 uh, through um, Abuja. And the majority, only about 0.2% of these passengers have not had a COVID-19 PCR negative result on arrival. So 99.8% had a COVID-19 PCR result on arrival. The majority, uh, specifically 85%, specifically 85% um, had no issues with the portal on coming in. They're none at all. They were able to pay and they were able to clear the airport. 15% had problems with the portal and this was sorted out in 12% of cases uh, before they exited the airport. But I must say, if you have, if you have done everything you're supposed to do on the portal, clearing is very quick. 
within a very short period of time. Um, so I have, just to explain to you how the portal works, there are three sections to the portal if you go in. The first section is you fill in your health questionnaire. This is the very same paper copy health questionnaire that we used to give um, in, the air, in, the, uh, in the airlines on your way into Nigeria. So you fill it in. The next section is you upload your COVID-19 PCR test result. The PCR test result needs to be valid for at least 120 hours before you board. Now, we have been very generous. We started off with a 96 hour um, um, validity. Um, but because of the difficulties that people were having from the US or far from places in terms of being able to meet that 96 hour validity, we had to extend it to 120 hours. But the majority of countries that require um, arrival results have turnarounds of 72 hours. The reason why we have to shorten the time period between the time you have the test and the time you, you, you board is because we want as much as possible the result to reflect your current status in terms of your infectivity. Mm -hmm. In terms of your infectivity. And I'll give you an example. If you come in, let's say you, you do your test 24, 48 hours before you board and you're in the UK. On your way to the airport, you pick, you pick up COVID. When you arrive Nigeria, even though you have a negative PCR result, if you arrive Nigeria and we test you straight away, we would only pick up about seven, less than 10% of cases that will seroconvert having picked up the infection. If we delay that test until day five, we'll pick up about 85%. If we delay that test until day seven, we will pick up about 96%. The, so the longer we delay testing up to the end of the incubation period, which is 14 days on average, the more likely we are to pick up a positive result. And indeed, when we look at the figures we have for Lagos, for instance, uh, when we started this, we had 2,400 passengers that were tested for Lagos, 2,403. These were all passengers that had negative COVID-19 PCR test before boarding. When they arrived Lagos at day seven, we tested them, 80 of them, eight zero were positive with COVID. And this is just 2,400 passengers. We get between five to 7,000 passengers every day coming into Nigeria if we were to open all the airports. So you can imagine the number of new infections that will be importing. If we had tested those 2,400 on arrival, we would have only, we, we, it's very unlikely, we, we would probably have picked up only a fraction of those ones. And Lagos has put so much investment into their COVID response. Do you really think they would accept a situation where between 150 to 200 new cases potentially will be, com be coming into Lagos every day? So we had to make that arrangement for testing. We didn't want to retest at day 14 because we've realized it's very difficult for people to quarantine or self-isolate for 14 days. So looking at my third aim, which was to limit or reduce the quarantine period, we realized based on the incubation period and the advice from our technical teams as well, if we test at day seven, it's very likely it will reflect what will happen by day 14 because the majority would have been picked up. We would only be missing about 4%. So we said test at day seven. If you're negative by day eight, exit quarantine, end of story. And it's not hugely different to what other countries like Finland are doing, for instance. Finland are doing the same thing. The only difference is they test on arrival and then they test more than 72 hours after arrival. And if you're negative, they allow you to exit, but not less than 72 hours. So not, it's not hugely different to what other countries are doing. And it enables people to exit. If we had a system where we can enforce quarantine and people will effectively quarantine, we don't even need these testing at all. If you, even if you come in with COVID, if you effectively self-isolate yourself, you're not going to have, it's not going to be a major issue in terms of our numbers in the country. But sadly, we don't have that ability to enforce. And therefore, the only way we can make sure that travel is kept safe is by testing at day seven, making sure that people come in with a negative PCR result and testing at day seven to pick up those 
that will are likely to come up with COVID pretty early on and isolate them. Dr. Ali, now, Dr. Yes. Ali, just a minute. I need to come in here. Uh, we understand all that. Now, uh, you need to have booked online, you know, register online. For those who are not able to register online because the portal wasn't working, the challenge is when they return, when they get to Nigeria and try to pay or something at the airport, it's very, very stressful. I think that is the major thing. So, I don't think people have the problem in doing the seven testing, but the stress of when you arrive and what they go through at the airport. One, the portal sometimes does not work and then they can't register online. And then when they arrive, there are challenges at the airport. Can you address those major issues before we move to the next step? So I don't think it's about doing the, the test on the seventh day, yeah. but the stress of arrival, the portal not working, and then the issue of the labs and double payment and, and all that. I know you still move to that. So, yes, so um, I'll, I'll move to that. Why don't I go through the questions? So I hope people have understood how the portal works. And again, uh, Abike, just to stress, the portal works. For okay. people who are not IT savvy, you could have challenges. And indeed, uh, for all of us, we have challenges. Uh, my family left a week ago. The UK portal, it took me two hours to, to put three details on, three persons on. But the fact is, the portal itself is working. It is the only thing that would allow us to move from paper to electronic all other countries have moved electronic, and Nigeria has to move electronic. And there are two systems on the portal. If you are not able to pay, you can still generate a barcode. It is that barcode that allows you to clear the airport very quickly. It's the barcode that allows you to clear very quickly. Because if you have the barcode, even if you haven't paid, it's very easy to put your payment in. So we have, um, in the last two, three weeks, we had to put aside the mandatory presentation of the barcode because people were having problems uh, downloading the barcode. It's now very straightforward. When you go in, you do step one, health questionnaire. Step two, you upload your PCR result. Step three is the payment. You can still upload the barcode without even going to the payment. And in the, in the coming weeks, um, Abike, we will be making the barcode mandatory because it's the only way we can get rid of the paper side so that we can we can follow follow and be able to track changes but let me go through the questions and answers i've got 20 of them and i think they will answer most of the issues that people have so the first one is why do international travelers have to use the the, the portal and somebody was asking me what is the portal the portal we're talking about is the nigeria international travel portal and it's because nigeria needs to move away from paper copies we need electronic systems to be able to document, track, verify, and store accessible information. And with five to 7,000 passengers coming in every day, it is impossible to use hard copy. It's impossible. This system allows us to open the airports. And I can tell you, if we didn't have this system, we would still have been struggling to open the airports in, in late October. So it's a choice between opening up safely and having this system with some of the inconvenience that might be attached to it or keeping the airport closed until such a time that the COVID response goes away. And there are countries that haven't opened up their airports. South Africa is only about to open now. A lot of countries throughout the world continue to have these restrictions because this is the new normal. So when should the pre-boarding COVID-19 test be done? It needs to be done 120 hours maximum before you board. It's a, at least we have extended it. Tests done more than 120 hours are not valid because it doesn't really tell you your true infectivity status at the time you arrive in Nigeria. We don't want to have a system where we, you test pre-boarding, test on arrival, and test at day seven. It's unnecessary. So that the, the test on arrival that we have put aside at the airport is in order for us to be able to have an alternative, which is testing before you leave. And that needs to be as close as possible to the time of, um, the time of arrival. When should I register on the travel portal? You are advised to begin your registration as soon as you get your COVID-19 negative PCR result, because that would enable you to go onto the system straight away and uh, register. You can actually fill the health questionnaire, save it, 
And then when you get your COVID-19 PCR test, upload it and then do your payment. So you can register at any time, but preferably to register at a time when you have your PCR result. So the other, the other thing is my airport of departure and terminal option are not captured. So when you go on to the payment, it will come up with a choice of where you want to have the test done. Uh, and you choose where you have to want to have the test done. If your test is not, if the city that you're going to be in um, is not there clearly, then you will need you you will need to um, um, you will need to choose the city that is closest to you, or choose a lab that is closest to where you will be at day seven. And regardless of whichever lab you choose, it's the responsibility of that lab if you have paid for them to make sure that you are tested wherever you are in the country. Uh, now, the other question is less to do with the diasporans, but are diplomats traveling into Nigeria required to provide a negative COVID-19 PCR? Yes. So everybody has to come in with a negative COVID-19 PCR test, regardless of who you are, whether you're a diplomat or not. Um, there are exceptions um, when it comes to children. So when should the post-arrival COVID-19 PCR test be done? It needs to be done on the seventh day after arrival, the lab that you have paid into will contact you to schedule an appointment. They are all private laboratories. However, if you develop symptoms of COVID-19, you will need to continue self-isolating and you contact the state emergency helpline or the NCDC helpline. And we will be providing uh, information leaflets to passengers when they arrive. Um, what is the testing process for international travelers arriving in Nigeria? So I've already addressed this. Travelers must conduct two PCR tests, one before boarding and one at day seven. And it is mandatory for you to continue to self-isolate until you get your negative PCR result by day eight. And if you develop symptoms, you need to let us know early. So what does it, what do you do if it takes seven days to get the results in the country of uh, departure? Well. I'm afraid if you're going to come into Nigeria, you need a COVID-19 PCR test valid within five days. If you're unable to get it, our advice is you get in touch with the private laboratories in the countries where you reside. Uh, PCR tests really do not take a long period of time. We've accommodated by extending from 72 hours, which most countries have, to 120 hours. We cannot extend this any longer because it will not reflect your true status at the time you come into the country. So why are international travelers required to take a repeat PCR test? I've already explained this right from the beginning. How much does the repeat PCR test in Nigeria cost? So the costs vary depending on where you're going to have the test, the, the, the specific city portal you choose. This is because the state governments are responsible for testing in their areas they are the ones that negotiate with the private laboratories what the cost will be. So, for example, for Kanu, um, it's now 36,000 Naira. Uh, for uh, Abuja, it used to be 42,400 or 42,500 or so. We've been able to bring it down to 39,500 now with more labs coming on board. Lagos is 50,400. The cost will continue to come down as more and more laboratories come onto the portal. And it's your choice in terms of which laboratory you want to choose, but inevitably over time, we would expect the cost of these tests to continue to come down. But PCR tests have always been expensive. They are not antigen-based tests and will continue to be expensive until such a time that we have rapid tests available. Uh, but um, just to clarify, the federal government does not receive any of any any of the money that you pay into the private laboratories, um, the state. Is, this is an an arrangement between the state governments and the private labs. The the public laboratories are not allowed to do travel testing. Uh, why? Because we cannot afford to run a public health system and at the same time cater for travelers. The number of passengers we have is too high for us to be able to afford to provide free testing. And indeed, for most countries, traveler, traveling is a personal pursuit and the testing is charged. 
I know it is charged in parts of Europe, it is charged in the UK, um, and um, it's not something that the government can afford because of the number of passengers we have. At the moment, we test in Nigeria between two, about two to two and a half thousand tests every day. If we are to include the passenger testing, this will go up to about seven and a half thousand tests a day. And uh, it will not be affordable because we will run out of our, our kits that are supposed to be used for public health testing for, for cases. Um, so one of the challenges, the other question is, can I pay with a Naira credit card? One of the challenges people have with payment is where you have um, an international card and you choose the Naira option. And our advice is if you have an international card, use the dollar option. If you have a Naira card abroad, you can use the Naira option for payment. We are in the process of getting additional payment platforms, including PayPal, so that it will be easier for people with international cards to be able to use their credit cards. But even if you do not pay, you can still upload the QR code because the QR code is what gives us the electronic versions of your health questionnaire and the electronic version of your COVID-19 PCR negative result. So for instance, if you happen to be positive at day seven, we need to be able to go back and check your COVID-19 PCR test that you've uploaded and check and see, is it genuine? Is it a PCR test or could it have been an antigen test, etc.? We will not be able to do that if you hand it over a, a hard copy because we have a room. We already have a room full of paperwork for health questionnaires, a whole room in the airport. And nobody will be able to go through those, those paperwork in, over, in order to be able to retrieve your hard copy. And that's why we need the QR code. We need you to go onto the portal, use the portal, even if you cannot pay, download your barcode, and it will make life easier when you land in Nigeria. So is that, uh, what is the procedure for short trips less than seven days? Well, I'm afraid there's nothing like short-term visit to Nigeria anymore. If you are coming into Nigeria, you self-isolate for seven days, whatever you will be doing. So if you have any plans for short-term visits, our advice is um, if you are coming in as a business visitor, etc., you need to make arrangements to make sure that the number of days you spend is seven days plus. Um, otherwise, uh, you might as well just do Zoom calls, um, etc., or virtual meetings as an option. Uh, but certainly, you, we, you have to self-isolate. It's no different to other parts of the world that have longer, longer day, uh, incubation periods. Oh. Um, is the testing required for children? So we've exempted children below the age of 10. Um, when should passengers with long layovers carry out their pre-boarding test? So we're looking into this, but um, that's why we extended the validity period for the PCR from 96 hours to 120 days. Um, and um, um, because we, we, we hope that it will accommodate uh, people with uh, long layover. Um, so the other question is, if you come into Lagos or Abuja, do you have to stay in Lagos or Abuja for the seven days of your self-isolation? No. If you are moving on to Port Harcourt or you are moving on to Meiduguri, you can still go ahead. Uh, we are working very closely with the states. We've just added six more states to the portal, and we're trying as much as possible to get private laboratories across the country so that it will be more convenient for passengers to be tested wherever they are. But as I said, if you pay to a lab, we are insisting that the laboratories sort out your sample collection wherever you are in the country. And um, we've um, allowed the states to make accommodation for their logistics to make sure that this is possible. So um, how do I correct the information already provided? So if you have provided information on the portal and uh, you need to change it, then uh, you can send an email and there's um, additional information on the travel portal where you can send us additional uh, travel information. Some of the complaints we get has to do with receiving an error message by passengers saying duplicate records when they are trying to upload onto the portal. The main reason for this is because you've already registered. So if you register, you are in the process of doing your health questionnaire, you finish your health questionnaire, you, you save, and then you get interrupted, you go away. You don't need to start the process all over again. Um, it's already saving on the portal because if you try entering your information all over again, it will come up with a duplicate record. So it means the system has received and stored your information and you, 
you don't need to go back right from the beginning. All you need to do is to enter your passport and your um, um, nationality and the date, and uh, it will come up with your with where you stopped. Um, and the same thing as well with payment. You can defer payment until just before you travel. Uh, all you need to do is you go in, log on again, uh, select the pay make payment module uh, to retrieve your data already captured, and uh, you go ahead to pay. Um, another question has to do with the QR code. So let's say you do everything, you pay, and you forget to print out your QR code. You can still go back onto the portal and uh, access the barcode and print it out quickly. And just to say, for people who have done everything on the system, Abike, it takes minutes to clear at the airport. Minutes, honestly. And we've had, just as much as we've had a lot of uh, complaints about the portal, we've also had We've also had a lot of um, compliments. We've had colleagues, we've had people coming back from abroad saying that our portal actually works compared to what's happening in other countries, particularly in Africa, where th there's, very little, that there's very little being set up, maybe because of, um, uh, they don't have the resources to do that. And even in Nigeria, Abiking, the portal, if not for the private sector, we wouldn't have gotten this far. It would have taken us much, much longer to do so. But we were able to work through the Coalition Against Coronavirus Disease with, uh, with GT Bank Access, uh, the Nangote Foundation, and a part of the oil sector. And they were the ones that supported the setting up of the portal. Because for the business community, it was in their best interest for the international airports to open up. And I can recall when the airports were closed, there was as much problem for people in the diaspora in fact, there was more because the option here, Abike, is you wanted to travel. There will be some convenience, inconvenience during the COVID pandemic. There's no doubt, but at least we've opened things up. We've allowed you to travel in a more safer way. The people that you have within the cabin in the airlines, they've all been tested and they are COVID-19 PCR negative. So you have some comfort that the person you are sitting with by your side who is not wearing a mask and you're eating and chatting with is not infectious at the time they bought. And when you arrive in Nigeria, we from our own side, from our own responsibilities, we have made sure that we have limited the risk. We ca you cannot eliminate it altogether, but we've mitigated the risk of additional importations coming in. And if they do come in, we have a system by testing later on, a week later after arrival, to pick up those that are that have the disease fairly early on before they transmit it to others. So it's an option that we have because the other option is not to open the international airports and just leave it closed, but it will be detrimental to our economy. It will harm our businesses and it will not allow uh, people from the diaspora to, to, to be able to travel as well as other travelers as well. Um, so um, what should, um, so the other issue, the last question I think has to do with the issue of failed payment. And this is what has generated the most um, angst. And what I wanted to, to say is if you pay, if you are charged more than twice, there's a system that would allow you to be refunded. The gentleman who came back from Canada, the issue was he couldn't get to the right people, but we've now set up a customer support center. Uh, we've set up additional support at the airport uh, we are providing additional information leaflets. And if you pay, you now have a transaction code that will come to you in the same way that if you pay for any other bank transaction that you can use to approach a lab. And we've told the labs, even if they haven't received confirmation of your payment, if you have the transaction code that will show clearly that you have paid to SOSO lab at SOSO date this amount, they will have to take your sample. And they can sort it out later. So the, the delays in payment verification reaching the labs is already being solved. Um, we have training already underway today where the administrators, the senior managers in the laboratories will now have admin access to the portal. So they can go into the portal and check for payments. So there shouldn't really be any issues with regards to verifying payments. Uh, but overall, the portal, the, to summarize what I'm trying to say, the portal it's working. 85% of passengers have no problem with this. The small number percentage that have a problem with it is sorted at the time of arrival. People do not need to be afraid 
of using the portal or coming into Nigeria for their businesses and family visits, etc. We are trying as much as we can to make your experience, your travel experience pleasant. But just like in any other part of the world, this is COVID. We, 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 there will be inconveniences attached to it. And I am pleading with people that are traveling to use the portal. Even if you cannot pay, download your barcode. It will enable us to have electronic versions of your health questionnaire, electronic versions of your COVID PCR result. If you don't, in the coming week, we will make it mandatory for the QR code to be available to airlines before people travel. So um, this is the only way we can move on to an electronic uh, version. We have customer support available, and uh, we will be very happy to continue to receive uh, feedback from you. But the portal, I'm afraid, has come to stay. Um, it's the only way that we can enable our airports to operate safely and to increase the number of flights. We've just increased the flights coming into Lagos uh, today. Uh, we were having only four flights. We've increased the flights to seven. We will now have 2,500 passengers coming into Lagos. We are keeping Abuja at around 1,300, 1,400. But that means that we are now accommodating 50% capacity. We used to accommodate um, a 20, 20 to 30% capacity. And uh, finally, just to re-echo again, Looking at just the 2,000, first 2,400 persons that we've tested since we started this system, at day seven, we've picked 80 passengers with COVID. These are people that we would have missed if we hadn't tested them at day seven. If we had tested them at day one on arrival, we would have missed up to 90% of them. So that in itself is further confirmation that we have to do the testing. And it allows people to exit. You can stop isolating at day eight. Whereas if you don't, if we don't do the testing, the only option we have will be to quarantine or self-isolate you for 14 days. And even then, we don't have any certainty that you're actually self-isolating. You might be going around and we'll end up with COVID. This is a temporary situation. COVID will go away eventually, but we need to make sure that the amount of work we have put into the country's response is we are not dragged back again, as we can see with some of the um, issues that are now cropping up in, in Europe, um, uh, possibly linked to tourists, etc. Over to you, Abike. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, some questions are coming in in the chat. Number one, can you share the portal with everybody? Some the, oh. the portals at the. Yeah. So I, I will I will type it I will type it in because we do have concerns. We've been told that um, uh, people are trying to. Um, to uh, to um, to set up something very similar, uh, I will just type it in, and it should come up. It's um, https uh, dot forward slash forward slash nitp dot ncdc dot gov dot ng. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Then, then again, when are you likely to have this rapid testing? We can't find you on the uh, Yes, so uh, good question. So the antigen test, the rapid test, they are all based on the presence of uh, protein on the surface of the virus. The ones that have been validated so far have been shown to have a much, much lower sensitivity than the PCR test. In fact, um, the, the two that are likely to come out, of which one is, the, is one of those that the WHO have just placed on the EUA, it's going to be licensed only for people with, with significant symptoms. Because think of it, if a test is not very sensitive, like oh. the antigen test, you need to be excreting a lot of the virus in order to have a positive result. So it, it, it's going to be licensed only in situations where people are very symptomatic, which will be mostly in the, in the clinical facilities, the hospitals, when people present with fever, cough, respiratory symptoms, etc. The WHO, in fact, have made it very clear that it shouldn't be used for low-risk populations, including travelers, because you're going to miss a large chunk of them, a large chunk of them. In the U.S., they, they use a lot of the antigen tests, and um, in the, uh, apart from the U.S., in other parts of the world, we know that the sensitivity is around 60, max maybe 70% in the field. Compared, when you compare it with PCR. So you'll be missing about three to four out of every 10 confirmed uh, cases of PCR. As far as we're concerned, we are continuing with the PCR test until such a time 
that we are very confident that an antigen test that can provide similar results to a PCR is available. But at this point in time, I'm afraid we don't have that, um, that, that, that luxury. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. A lot of questions are coming out of the chat, um, and I think you've addressed some of them. Yes, I some have. Um, I think one, you've addressed um, actually I, everything. Oh, yes. Yeah. For That's those of that, you uh, yeah. portal address, you just uh, typed it out now, so you can uh, thank you there. So, Honorable Tara, where are you? There are some uh, questions we, we can't find Honorable Tara. Um, Okay, so just to clarify, so from, for my family, I was using the UK portal to get them back to the UK. And it took me more than an hour to put the details for three persons. And um, even though there was no payment, um, uh, and I was quite uh, familiar with the uk.gov.ng uh, site, having, having lived in the UK for more than 20 years, um, but nevertheless, it was quite challenging for me to, to fill in their details. So what I'm trying to say is across the board, countries require these electronic formats. Um, we are no different. Um, if you are unable to pay, you will not be penalized in terms of boarding just because you cannot pay. When you come into Nigeria, it will be inconvenient for you, certainly. Um, but what we are most interested in is you need to be able to upload your documents so that we can stop this silly thing of um, having hard copies that cannot be of any use um, and uh, that are environmentally unfriendly. Okay, thank you very much. Obina, um, I, I, I think you've addressed virtually everything on the chat, but they are still asking for the portal address. Does it vary from country to country? Somebody is asking, because you just said you use it. So it's the same. So can you just it's, it's a, write it out again? So uh, I'll write it uh, out again, but um, uh, I will also say if people search for NCDC, uh, oh. there's, um, uh, they can actually access the site through uh, NCDC. Um, uh, but uh, it's NITP, Nigeria International Travel Portal, dot NCDC, uh, dot gov, dot NG. And of course, it's HTTPS to show that it's a, it's a secure site. Mm -hmm.